Hello, and welcome to another YouTube tutorial for Nandland.com. I'm Russell, and today I'm going to talk about uh, gates inside of an FPGA. So, the gates I'm going to talk about specifically are OR gates, AND gates, I'm going to talk about a NOT, I'm going to talk about an XOR, and a NAND gate which if you haven't figured out by now is why I call it nandland.com. So, gates inside of an FPGA are the fundamental building block for FPGAs. I introduced this in my last video about what is an FPGA. I introduced a, a specifically an OR gate, but basically gates are your building block for your FPGA. So when you are writing your VHDL or your Verilog, you are going to be creating these gates. So it's helpful to understand what these gates are and how they work so that you have an idea of what you're actually building. So in this video I'm going to go through each one of these gates in detail. I'm going to draw all the truth tables for all the gates and just give you an idea of how each one of them works. Uh, in the next video it's going to be a little more advanced. I'm going to start drawing some circuits with these gates and introducing the concept of lookup tables which is what an FPGA actually uses to implement this logic. So again just going to introduce the truth tables for these gates and get you more familiar with them individually. So, let's get started. If you didn't watch the first video, it's okay, I'm going to do the OR gate again. Let's start there. This is what an OR gate looks like. A uh, simple OR gate has two inputs and one output. And, as you can maybe surmise, if either of the inputs is a 1, then the output will be a 1. So again, I just want to make it clear that when I say 1 or 0, I'm talking about Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is a branch of mathematics that was introduced in 1854 by the mathematician George Boole. And so we, from him we have the words we have Boolean algebra. Um, in C, there's actually defined types that are the Boolean type, so, which can be defined as true or false. And basically, Boolean algebra means one or zero, true or false, it's all the same idea. So, either of my inputs can be a one or a zero, my output can be a one or a zero. So, knowing that information, we can actually draw what's called a truth table. A truth table for any of these gates is going to be slightly different depending on the gate, but it tells you how the gate works. And you can actually draw a truth table by giving all the possible input combinations and then deciding what is the output for that given set of inputs. So I'm going to draw the truth, ta truth table for an OR gate now. So we have I1, we have I2, and we have OUT. So your inputs can be a 0 or a 1. So all the possible combinations are as follows. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. These are your four possible combinations. Now, if both of your inputs on an OR gate are 0, then your output is going to be 0. Because again, if either of your inputs are a 1, your output will be a 1. Otherwise, it's a 0. So 0. Here we have input 2 is a 1, so therefore your output, one of these two is a 1, so therefore your output's going to be a 1. And this time your other input is a 1, so that's a 1. And now both of them are 1, so again, 1. So here you go. This is the truth table for an OR gate. Next, AND gate. AND gate if you were to say it in words, means that both of your inputs need to be 1 for the output to be 1. And it looks like this. Okay? So we'll draw the truth, tra truth table now. I1, I2, and out. 
So here are my combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So again, both inputs need to be a 1 for my output to be a 1. The only input to the truth table where that actually occurs is this last combination down here. So here is where the output is a 1. For every other combination of inputs, the output is a 0. That is an AND gate. Uh, I'll come back to NOT, but let's do XOR. XOR is kind of an interesting one. XOR means exclusive OR. And the way I like to remember XOR is either OR but not both. I'll explain what that means. First of all, it looks like this. So it's basically an OR gate with another line in the front of it. We can keep the same truth table, but the output will change. So I can erase the output column. And think about what I, what I said about what an XOR gate does. Either OR, but not both. So the output will be a 1 if either of the two inputs are a 1, but if both of the inputs are a 1, the output is a 0. So what that tells you is that neither of these inputs are a 1 here, so this is going to be a 0. Either of the two inputs is a 1 here, and either is, an is a 1 here. So these are both 1s on, for those combination of inputs. But down here, both of the inputs are a 1, so the output's going to be a 0. That's an XOR, exclusive OR gate. Uh, exclusive OR gates aren't used incredibly often, but they're useful for things like parity checking, which I will get into in future videos. Oops. Now I want to talk about a NAND gate. Gotta love NAND gates. NAND gates have this, it's an AND gate with a bubble on the end. The bubble, whenever you see a bubble in a uh, schematic like this with gates, it means not. It's the inverted, it's the inv opposite of what, of what it would normally be. So if you think about that, it's the opposite of what an AND gate would actually be. The output is the opposite of what an AND gate would be. So a normal AND gate we drew where the only, it was 0, 0, 0, 1. The output is inverted with a NAND gate. So now these all change. 0 becomes a 1, 1, 1, and the 1 becomes a 0. So this is what your truth table for your NAND gate looks like. The last gate. I'm going to introduce is the simplest one, and it's just a NOT. It's a, basically an inverter. So a NOT looks like this. One input, one output. And all a NOT does is it takes the input, and again the bubble is an inverter. It does the opposite, so it will take your input and turn it into NOT your input. So a 0 becomes a 1, a 1 becomes a 0. The truth table for that looks like this. I, O. Your input can be a 0, your input can be a 1. When, it's, when the input is a 0, the output is a 1. When the input is a 1, the output is a 0. And there you have it. Those are the basic logic gates uh, that are used in Boolean algebra. So when you're constructing your FPGA, these are some of the basic gates that you'll be using. Um, there's more things inside of an FPGA than just gates, but gates are the simplest thing to think about, so that's where we're going to start. So, again, in the next video I'm going to talk about how these gates can be combined together to draw circuits, and then how those circuits would actually be implemented inside your FPGA. So, definitely subscribe to my videos and continue watching. Thanks for watching Nanland.com.